Hi, Soaring Solo Artist Tribe. My name is Jessica Lynn Johnson, and I am the founder and CEO of Soaring Solo LLC. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about opinions. And just like I said in the subject, opinions are like assholes, and everybody's got one. And that is so true. That's true in life. That's true in the creative process. So today we're going to be focusing on how do we decide who to let in and when to let these opinions change our work, impact our work, influence our work, all those sorts of things, and when to not allow it to do that. So first and foremost, you want to start with your own opinion. This is solo theater. This is all about your story, your authentic expression. So all the way from the idea phase through the touring phase, you want to be checking in with yourself. Do you feel good about what you're saying from stage, the way that you're performing it, the things that you're writing, the ideas that you're having? Do you feel good about it? Do you feel like you are expressing yourself in the way that you want to? So that's first and foremost, the most important thing. Next, I would say our representation, our agents and managers, our creative team. We want to check in with those people because they're going to be bringing in a business perspective that perhaps as a creative type, we're not really considering. Um, when I was in the college tour phase of my career, um, I found my agent's opinion so very valuable because he often knew um, which schools were looking for which sort of sorts of things to book as to book performers. And so knowing those insights was so invaluable because I didn't know if cussing was going to be okay for certain schools or if I needed to take it out or if I could leave in certain scenes or take certain scenes out. And of course, always keeping the integrity of my story and, and the mission of my show, but also wanting to um, appease a client because the colleges were my clients. So I wanted to make sure that I was offering something to their students that would be a value that was going to really work for them. So my agent's opinion was, was really important. Um, you also want to consider your director or dramaturg's opinion or your coach. Um, again, at the end of the day, you're the boss. This is your story, but you want to take in a professional opinion, especially with somebody who really understands the genre of solo theater, which is not like any other performance genre. It's its own thing. And you really want someone who understands the ins and outs of that genre to um, give you their input, their opinion about your show. And then you decide if you want to take it or leave it. Um, next, we want to consider... Um, someone who's really close to us. So maybe it's a significant other, um, a best friend, a family member, but someone who really knows us inside and out, who we trust, who we know has our best interest at heart, who is going to be able to see if we're being authentic up there on stage, if we're sharing our story um, in a true way that, that really reflects who we are and what we want to say. Someone who's really close to us might be a good person to, um, to get that feedback from. Um, we also might want to consider writers groups. Now with this, I always say, trust your gut when you walk into that room. How do you feel? Does it, does it feel really cutthroat and competitive in the writers group? Or does it feel really supportive and nurturing and safe? If it's supportive and nurturing and safe, then sure, you want to get feedback from other writers, people who are also being vulnerable with their artistic expression in the room and who know from a writing perspective or a performance perspective what that feels like to have to share. Um, and they also probably have uh, valuable creative insights to offer. So that's something to consider as well. Then there's the topic of reviewers. Now, reviewers are tricky because a lot of times as artists, we can take a review and say that that is our validation, or we can say it's our demise. We can look at it either way based on what that reviewer has to say. But reviews can be really valuable if we look at them the right way. If we're able to first assess the source, now is this you know, some really well-known publication like the New York Times or the LA Times, or are we talking about random blogger from Milwaukee who we've never even heard of? Um, is it a valuable resource for our artistic growth? Do we want to take in what they're saying from that perspective? But even if it is the New York Times or the LA Times or, or some other really reputable source, we always want to check in with ourselves and say, okay, you know, is what they're saying true? Could I, could I change this part of my show or alter it and allow it to be better in the ways that they're suggesting? Or do I just disagree? Do we just have different tastes? Because at the end of the day, you cannot people please your way to success. You just can't. What you'll do if you're trying to people please a reviewer or your friends or your management or anybody along the, the creative journey, what you're going to do is dilute your own voice 
and have it become so quiet that you can't even hear it anymore. So again, we, we want to take in all of these things from reputable sources who can offer something, but we don't want it to quiet our own voice and to shut out our own voice. Um, the next thing I would say to consider would be the audience that you're writing to, for, and about. So if you're writing about the LGBTQIA community, or you're writing about um, domestic abuse, or you're writing about um, surviving cancer, or whatever the case may be, some specific issue or topic, you want to find people who are living and breathing that topic, who are activists or speakers or just have had that life experience, you want to talk to those people and see how your show is resonating with them. Even if it's just in the script phase or the idea phase, or if you're already touring it, you might want to give them complimentary tickets to come and see it to get their insight on what they think about the way that you're talking about this particular subject. That can be really valuable because these are people who are in the know and they're going to have a little bit higher elevated of a perspective than just the average theater goer because they're really in the know about this particular topic. So those are some opinions that you might want to take into account. And of course, just your audiences in general. You want to just vibe with your audiences and see, are they are they with me? Are they not with me? So I recommend Q and A's for this. That's a really great way to see how your show is landing from an audience perspective. You just sit with your audience after the show. You have somebody moderate it and see what they have questions about. See what they're raving about, what they loved, because that will teach you a lot about how your audiences are receiving your story. So that's my two cents <laughs> about opinions. And I hope that it was helpful. Please click like if it was. And please feel free to comment below if you have any additional insights about this. And um, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can be the first to know when I have new content out there. And uh, visit jessicalynnjohnson.com or you can pop me an email at soaringsoloartist at gmail.com. And I do private coaching. I do uh, group coaching. And I also do a free class every week here in Los Angeles. So if any of that is appealing to you, um, please reach out to me as I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much and blessings on your solo journey.